There's been a lot of fuss lately about a company called Game Science who make dice for role-playing games. Um, they're different to conventional dice, they claim. Um, so here are some normal dice. This is Q Workshop, they're dragon dice. Um, and if you feel any ordinary dice, you feel that the edges are rounded. Now they're rounded by putting them in a tumbler. They, what they do is they cover it in paint, put it in a tumbler, and the tumbler crushes the dice together until eventually the corner rounds off. And the claim is that where they round the corners off, the, these edges, they don't wear evenly. Um, therefore, some surfaces will roll over easier than others. And game science don't do that. Uh, that's not how they paint their dice. Instead, when they, when they remove the dice from the sprue, there'll be a sprue of dice in the injection molder, they cut it off the sprue and then they file the edge down. Um, whereas these guys would, you know, just leave the sprue on it and use the tumbler to wear that away. Um, so they, they file it down and then some crazy looking colonel looks like he's straight out of the Civil War, paints numbers on him by hand. This makes them expensive. So these dice, this set of 12 polyhedral dice, cost me £36. Uh, and because there was, uh, was it, uh, £6.27 of VAT owing on that, Royal Mail then charged me £8 to not deliver it. Uh, I'm a recently privatised postal service, being really nice by not delivering stuff that you owe VAT on and charging you a handling fee for the privilege. Um, so that make, means that these 12 dice, as a British person, cost me £50. Pounds. So I've got to ask myself, is that worth it? Well, I'm going to answer that with science, because they've got science in the name. So I'm going to do a science experiment, and I have no idea what's going to happen. Okay, so there's my receptacle. Now I've got here some salt water that I've frozen right down. And the theory is it should be dense enough for the dice to be suspended in the water. That's probably a little too frozen. I need to not get any solid in there. Ooh, right. Uh, okay, let's try the first dice. This D6, I don't know if you can notice this, but the corner here has some burr on it. So I'd say that's the first fail for the game science dice in the sense that that burr shouldn't be there. Uh, it's near the sprue cut, so I imagine that's from when he filed down the burr, the, the sprue cut, that the burr then, you know, from a mistaken filing. But let's see, if I put this in the water, it slowly sunk and seemed to roll towards the two, so let's put the three there. I think it's actually, it went towards the two because of the shape of the receptacle. So, let's try... Oh, that's cold! Right, let's try a slightly taller receptacle. What I need is more salt, I think. Loads of it. Okay, so, let's see if that has a preference for which way up it goes. Couldn't tell. <laughs> I could not tell. Uh, I need a bigger glass. Oh, that's cold. Oh, that's so cold. I stayed where it was. It's kind of sinking a bit too quick to really tell. I wonder if more salt will help. Well, let's try the D20. It seemed to be spinning as it dropped into the salty murkiness and I can no longer see down there. Well, I think this experiment was mostly a failure uh, in the sense that I can't actually tell if this dice is balanced or not. Okay, seriously, science doesn't work. It's a lie. Why does... Success! Uh, took a little bit of experimenting, but I found the answer. What I've got here is an egg cup with some water in, packed full of salt. And if you're wondering why the egg cup's so dirty, it's because I used to use this one uh, for cleaning my paintbrushes years ago. Um, and I have tested these already. 
Uh, so this is Game Science Dice. I've put it in with four up, four stays up, which is good news. I've just turned that around. So the five's up. So here we are, we've got a d6 in there, and I can turn that to any angle, and it stays with the same side up. That means there's no weight rolling the dice over. Um, so that's good. I've done that with all of these dice, even the d5, which is the one I was most concerned about. It's a balanced die. It turns out I didn't need to freeze the water at all. Sorry, I just had an alarm go off because I'm cooking my dinner, so... Right, uh, d20, so the 18's up. If I rotate that, it stays on the 10, stays on the 20, stays on the 14, and, and spot the line between them. So that's, that's really good. But the question is, what happens... Let's mix the salt back in. What happens with ordinary dice. So here I've got a normal d6 and that just sunk straight to the floor. What is that made of? Uh, let's try another one. Oh, I don't know what's in these, but these are a lot heavier than the game science dice. I'll try and mix some more salt in. Nope, I can't test that. <laughs> I literally cannot saturate any more salt into this water. No, nope. it's just sinking. Ah, here's one that floats. So that's got the 18 pointing up. If I rotate it, the same number points up. Oh, no, he's 17. It rotates to the 3, do you see it? So if I just get the 17 back on top, I'll try to. And that rotates over. All by itself, just get away from the edge there. No matter what I do, that 3 wants to come up top. So that means the dice is not weighted evenly. I can find another one that floats. I've got a D14 here. That doesn't float. Um, let's try D8. Ah, what do they put in these things? Ah, here's one. So here's a D10. And that seems to want to get sort of 5 or 9 on top. So I just try and release that with the 3 on top. Roll straight around to the 9. Let's put it on its other axis. And it rolls straight around to the 2 or the 6. So that is an uneven dice. Uh, let's do a gem dice. They can't fill the gem dice with rubbish stuff. It has to be... Maybe they can. What's in this? Uh, it's got loads of... Uh, you can even see that's uneven in its weighting. It's got Records of painting it. Uh, here's a gem dice. In fact, there's a gem dice with what appears to be an air bubble inside. So that's not quite floating. Let me just try and mix the salt in a bit more. That's with the two on top. Okay, so the gem dice is better. It's the one, does it go around? I think this dice is actually reasonably good. Shame I don't have many gem dice. I've never been that keen on them. Here's one, here's a D20. Um, doesn't appear to be any air bubbles in this one. And that's rolling around, see, so... I push it one way, and then afterwards it rotates the other. So that's an uneven dice, despite being a gem dice. Um, so again, that well, that's where the edges are uneven. Um, let's try one of these. 
Oh, is that floating? Yes, just, ooh, just about. No, I think, yeah, it's just off the surface, so 17 on top. I push it, it seemed to roll around a bit. Yeah, there you go, that one's rolling to a 17. So I must remember that one's a lucky dice. Um, let's try one in the same range. D6 seems okay. Let's try the D10. Actually, the D10's not bad. And if I look at it, in actual fact, the edges on this are reasonably sharp. So this one hasn't been tumbled as much as some of my other dice. The same is true on the D6. The D20, however, has much smoother sides. So that was in the tumbler for a bit longer. So as we can see, the game sides are clearly better dice. They are truly random dice. Um, and also, I have a new favourite dice, which is this red and yellow one, because that roll 17 this is a high enough number, not high enough to be suspicious, eh? Are they worth the extra money? These do have, uh, almost like, I don't want to say scuff marks. I mean, when the, where they're cut off the sprue, there's always a sprue cut. Now, that, that's fine, and I accept that, because I understand why it's there. Uh, some of the surfaces, however, do look, it, it's not scuffing. I'm sure it's something to do with the moulding process. Um, but that's the point. These are moulded dice, they're not machined dice, and that's where you get a solid block and uh, a, a computer-controlled lathe, I think they're called. Not really my business, but um, that then, you know, skims the, the, the block down, and then you get a solid dice that way. And that's how casino dice are made. These probably aren't as good as casino dice because they're not machined, they're molded. Um, however, they are more affordable than casino dice because casino dice are unreasonably expensive and of course they don't come in all the cool dimensions. Um, so, uh, or, or even the standard role-playing size, I'd, I've never seen a 20-sided casino dice, so I suspect you'd uh, win on the craps table with that. Um, but yeah, there's little marks on the surface and stuff, so they're visually not as good as normal dice. Like, they look like they're more worn. Um, but of course they're not, they're precision. Uh, you know, as moulded dice go, I don't think we'll get more precise than this, simply because the moulds are obviously good, they're obviously regularly tested in, in that regard, and they don't go near a tumbler. Some of the painting on occasion goes a little over, you see on the bottom of the 11 here. Um, so, you know, it, they're not perfect. So, does that impact my opinion of them? No, because what I'm after here is dice that roll consistently well. Uh, that's what they promised, and I think that is what they deliver. I do need to clean off that little bit of burr. Other than that, that one imperfection on the D6, which is not that significant. The, the sprue points, uh, they're, they're visible on every dice if you can, uh, if you can find it. <laughs> in this case, I can't find it on the D4. So they're never going to look as good as my dragon dice. They'll never look as good as my elven dice, although arguably some of the elven dice aren't that readable. Uh, I haven't got any out, my Dwarven dice, you know, the, the Q Workshop stuff looks prettier, uh, that's for sure. Of course, for most games you only need the seven dice polyhedral set, but of course, nine times in ten, you want more than one of a dice. Um, so, what am I going to do now to ensure I have the best dice? Because um, I, whilst it's Great and fantastic, I have a set of Game Science dice, I'm going to use them, most definitely. They're going to be my dice now because I know that they are truly random dice. But I think... I think... 
ho I hope putting ordinary dice like this through a dice tower will... You know what? It's not going to be enough. It's not... I know these dice are broken now. And I have so many. I took years to collect these dice, and now they're useless. So, the net result of me buying Game Science dice is that my beautiful dice collection is now useless. I have been demoralised. Brilliant dice. Fuck it. What am I going to do now? I can't afford more of them.